Welcome back to a brand new Clash Royale video, guys. My name is Chief Pat, and today we're going to be hopping into episode number five of our Let's Play Clash Royale series. So again, as usual, I have some chests saved up over the last couple of days. Going to go ahead and open all of those right now, get into a couple of upgrades, as well as talk about some new cards, and then, of course, get into a trio of battles. Now, taking a look at that chest, we did end up getting up the Rocket, which is one of those new cards. The Rocket is a direct damage source, similar to the Lightning Spell, Fireball, Arrow, uh, that actually does the most damage out of any direct damage card, but it has an extremely small radius, making it a little bit risky to play. So I'm going to go ahead and get the arrows and the goblin hut upgraded. Again, guys, my theory is that when you're lower level, you can upgrade most of your stuff. Once it starts costing like 400 gold, a uh, 1,000 gold each, then you have to be a little bit conservative. But for now, let's go ahead and keep upgrading. And we did unlock the barbarians as well. So the barbarians are a five elixir card, one of the best cards in the game, in my opinion. Very strong against things like the prince, mini P.E.K.K.A., P.E.K.K.A., things like that. Also, again, guys, we have the rocket, the direct, direct damage card I talked about earlier. You can see the massive amount of damage it does, even at level one. The barbarian hut, which is the final spawner that we've unlocked, uh, giving us two barbarians at a time, uh, which definitely pack a punch. And finally, the cannon, the cheapest defense in the game, which again is really good against some of those cards like Hog Rider, etc. So we're going to go ahead and upgrade our minions right now. Most stuff is pretty cheap. We can upgrade our Fireball up to level 3. Definitely a good card to keep upgraded. And then taking a look at what we want to do for the final upgrade, let's go ahead and upgrade that Bomb Tower once. And then we do have enough gold to squeeze in that final Skeleton upgrade. All right, so taking a look at our deck and what we're rocking. Right now, we have the uh, Knight, we have the Goblin, the Musketeer, among other things. Taking a look at what we want to swap in. I think the Prince would be pretty fun to use. Let's go ahead and throw him in on the bottom right. The Bomber for some AoE. And the Spear Goblins would probably be pretty decent as well. Having all of those squishy cards makes it so we can compete against the Prince and stuff like that. And uh, we're also going to throw in the Fireball just to test it out, seeing as we upgraded it uh, within the last few seconds. So hopping into our first match of the day, we're going to be going against Dan Sam team. Looks like he is going to be a level six, whereas we're a level four. So this one could get a little bit difficult. Let's go ahead and drop our spear goblins as well as our regular goblins off the bat. That is the counter uh, to the prince wholeheartedly. Looks like he's going to go down no problem, as well as that gave us a one elixir advantage. So we're going to go ahead and slow build an army from the back of the uh, map. Now Musketeer is going to follow up as well. Looks like he hasn't dropped anything uh, just yet, because after I fast forward, you're going to see that he AFK'd from this battle. I don't know how often this happens for you guys. It definitely doesn't happen for me up top, but sort of out, out of nowhere, I started to build this push. And then I sort of realized that the game was over because he wasn't responding, even though it didn't uh, say anything. Maybe he rage quit. I'm not really sure what happened, but going to go ahead and clean up that free victory. Definitely don't mind it, especially with the fact that we're working towards our crown chest. And that's going to wrap it up for the first battle of the day. Okay, so he finally left the match there. Um, but that's going to be three crowns for us inside of the Clash or Nots. Again, guys, I don't know if I mentioned it in the Let's Play episodes, but my feeder clan is called Clash or Nots, similar to Clash of Clans, if you guys want to join. And uh, let's go ahead and open up that silver chest, at least start opening it, and open up our crown chest where we're going to get gold, gems, barbarians, which we can upgrade, cannon, which we can definitely upgrade, barbarian hut, guess what? We can upgrade it, and finally, a Valkyrie. Okay, so that's going to do it for our first crown chest. Luckily, we still have another one from the day before. Let's go ahead and go off against Ryan Serrano, who is going to be a level 5. So starting hand, I usually never like playing the Spear Goblins or the Goblins first. I'm going to play that Dragon, one of my favorite cards to start out with beginning. But seeing as he dropped that Barbarian Hut on the right hand side, I knew I could get some free poke off with those Spear Goblins. So that's why I opted to play that first. I knew I could play my Dragon later to counter this Barbarian push. So let's go ahead and start that off right now. Okay, so both the dragon as well as the musketeer, or sorry, the bomber are going to be an effective counter to that barbarian hut. Uh, and plus it did cost him a ton of elixir, so that's going to hurt him as well. Looks like he dropped a cannon. I was trying to hit all three targets at once, but I ended up throwing this fireball and hitting just the barbarian hut, which is what I was trying to do in the first place. So we got some damage on that barbarian hut. That's going to stop at least two barbarians. It got some damage on the crown tower, as well as our musketeer is going to fire away. And uh, no surprises here. This guy is going for the spawner deck, which I see a lot of you guys talking about inside of the comment section. So this will be a good test to see how we deal with the spawner as he drops some of his cards uh, in some of those buildings throughout both of the lanes. 
So not going to worry about the tombstone on the left. Of course, the skeletons really don't mean anything. Looks like he's going to follow up with another barbarian hut. Again, guys, the dragon is one of the best cards to play against a spawner. You can just go ahead and use your dragon to kill both the barbarians as well as the spear goblins. Bomber's going to help out as well. And we can go ahead and go down a counter push on the right hand lane. If we can actually kill that uh, barbarian hut, that's going to be a massive loss of elixir for him. So let's go ahead and keep pushing. Looks like our bomber's going to go in. Musketeer's going to shoot down that hut. And he definitely lost somewhere around maybe four to six barbarians there which uh, is a nice little trade for us. Okay, so going back on defense, looks like he has the baby dragon. As soon as it gets in range of the tower, I'm gonna drop that knight so the tower can take the baby dragon out. Looks like he's gonna start slowly making his way through lane. And this one, we're just gonna have to be in it for the long haul. We're gonna have to wait for a double elixir to really make that push against this deck. Of course, we can keep fireballing some of his buildings, get some poke damage here and there, but we're really not gonna be able to make that massive push until we get to this double elixir period. Okay, so it looks like we're there. One minute left inside of the match. Dragon's gonna get a shot off against that Spear Goblin, and let's go ahead and again start building up more counters to this push with the Bomber, the Musketeer, the Knights. All of my cards do extremely well against this. And again, guys, another Fireball on the tower. It'll slowly whittle him down, and if we can get one good push, we should be able to finish him off, even though he's a level five. So let's just keep doing that exact same card combo as he pushes his way down the lane. Okay, so Musketeer on the left. Looks like we got the double Musketeers going, so I threw a little happy face. We're going to throw the Bombers as well. Not quite the three Musketeer combo, but two Musketeers will do for now. And now we're really starting to make some progress. A Fireball onto four or three, I guess four buildings, including the Crown Tower. And uh, with 10 seconds left before we go to overtime, he doesn't have any buildings to defend just yet. The double Musketeer combo threw him for a loop. Looks like those Spear Goblins will go down. And with the Prince running down the game lane, that will be good game and a very well-fought match against the spawners. So moral of the story, don't freak out when you play a spawner deck. Have a couple of cards like the Baby Dragon or the Bomber. You don't need to have all of them like I have. Play conservatively and uh, you'll have your chance to shine eventually, similar to how I did inside of that match and you should be able to pull off at least a one crown to zero victory. So it looks like we're going against another level six, pretty common theme today, playing people two levels higher than us. Uh, I guess the last guy was level five. The first guy might not have counted because he AFK'd, but let's go ahead and try out against Night Thief. And we gotta punish him for misspelling Thief, guys. It's T-H-I-E-F, not T-H-E-I-F. We gotta, we gotta help. Chief is spelled C-H-I-E-F, one of my biggest pet peeves when people spell it with the, uh, the I after the E. Especially because Supercell showed me how many people have misspelled Chief Pat when they try to use my name inside of the game. It's pretty disturbing, but anyways, looks like we're getting into the battle. Uh, my push was mostly negated by that cannon. Looks like his minions are going to get pretty close to the tower. I thought we were able to two-shot those minions, which is why I didn't drop anything. But since it took three shots because he is a level six, that ended up doing a decent amount of damage against my tower. So pretty well played by him getting those minions down the lane. Let's go ahead and reset and be a little bit more conservative with our pushes. So saving up on what we've got, let's take a look. Not Pretty much all of these cards would be a solid one to play first, except for the Goblin. I'm going to end up playing our Knight. He's going to use the Lightning spell and aggro my King, which uh, isn't a very good sign for him. He's going to be low on Elixir now, and since he's low and played those Spear Goblins, guess what's coming down the right-hand lane? We got a Prince going straight for the Tower, and he has a Cannon to respond, but that's not going to do much as we are now having a dual prong approach, hitting both Towers at the same time. So about 40% damage to that first tower. Looks like we cleaned up that second tower on the right-hand side. And now we have a pretty significant advantage going into the last half of the battle. Now, I'm going to try to protect this tower as much as I can, but I'm not going to overcommit to it. If I have to give up this bottom right-hand tower to finish off the top left, that's going to be a win advantage for me because there's only 560 health on my tower and there's 1,200 on his tower. So if we end up swapping towers, that means that he's going to have to kill a full crown tower in order to stay in the game. So it looks like my knight was able to clean up that archer. Just gonna go ahead and just let him run down the lane with the baby dragon behind him to see what happens. Looks like he's gonna play a lightning, again, a very expensive card. And having to defend from both sides isn't gonna work out too well for him with, again, another knight pulverizing down the lane. And because his crown tower was shooting that dragon, that means the prince, well, I think I said knight earlier, the prince is gonna be able to dominate that tower and give us the easy crown uh, right there. Okay, so with 39 seconds left, this battle is all but over. He's going to lightning that other tower, but like I said, guys, that is a win for us, seeing as that tower was so low already. We're going to make a push for the finish with some goblins down the left-hand lane, Prince down the right. Not having any squishy cards for him is definitely costing him. Uh, he would need to play his spear goblins to stop my Prince if he wanted to have an effective counter. That's going to do it for this one. Uh, good game to Night Thief. Make sure to change your name, IEF, not EIF. 
and that will do it for the third battle of the day. So still looks like we are undefeated on this account. Uh, having a lot of fun with the prince as well as many other cards. I'm going to wrap up this episode today so it doesn't go on for too long. Uh, but again, this was the final episode I recorded before my laptop exploded. So from here on out, we will be fully up to date uh, after the global launch. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, if you guys have any deck suggestions, just drop them in the comment section below. Until the next video, I will see you guys later. Peace out.